Yes, we're talking about test jigs again this week on the factory, this time around. We've done a manufacturing run of the PicoDev distance sensor. This is a laser distance sensor. We've done our production and now we need to test all of these distance sensors. Let's get started. If you follow us on the socials, you might have seen this really really nice slowed down footage of the laser distance sensor being assembled. Those are 0402 components being placed one by one. And if you look closely the, at the angle, you can even see like how high the solder paste is on the pads. This was a really nice shot by our editor Luke. I can see some room for optimization here. This, this resistor, which obviously is not directional, gets rotated 180 degrees. So that'll be something to fix. And you might see that there's a little bit of wobble in that strip. We actually, we actually have our panels in these strips rather than a grid. So we only have tabs on two or four sides. And that was a considered choice. There was a bit of, there was a bit of weighing up there as to how we should panelize these. Each of these tabs we have to break off by hand. So it's far easier and faster if we only have two instead of four tabs. So we only have them on these sides and none on these sides. And you can see in that footage that there's a little bit of flex in the board, but it still manages to place 0402 components just fine. So once we've depaneled down to a single board, we of course need to test them. And this is one of the easier tests to do because a known distance is relatively easier to create than, you know, for example, a known temperature or air pressure. So I retooled the PicoDev test jig. This is this is the test jig that's been testing most of our PicoDev modules so far. And so I created this laser cut acrylic base for the PicoDev test jig. Really easy to create, just a couple of rectangles that I glued together using acrylic glue and a couple of gussets just to give it some strength. I could have bent this, but it, it occurred to me that I wanted this distance to be quite accurate. And so I, I figured it would be easier to get an exact alignment of this edge than it would to get an exact bend with like an exact radius in acrylic. In hindsight though, I probably could have bent it because the tolerance on the laser distance sensor, while it has really, really good relative uh, accuracy, the absolute accuracy is within a few millimeters anyway. So this would have been fine if I had just bent it. And this is what a test looks like. I just plug the module in and we get a beep and a green light. And once I remove the device, the green light is removed as well, and I can go on and test the next device. So obviously all that's happening here is we're measuring the distance between the laser sensor and this target and making sure that it falls within spec. If you're wondering why there's two connectors here, that's because this hasn't been used just for testing laser distance sensors. For other sensors, I've been using it with a device under test in one socket and a reference device in the other and comparing the two. And the code for this test is pretty simple. We just start by initializing the sensor and then we take the average of 32 samples, which is recommended by the data sheet. And then if the difference between the average and the reference distance, that's the, the real distance, is less than the tolerance from the data sheet, then we get a pass. With that in mind, it, it really amazes me that for such a real time test, you know, you feel like you've just plugged the device on, the sample rate is just so high that in that time we're able to do 32 ranging measurements and then take the average. It just never ceases to amaze me. You might recall I mentioned we'd have a go at an IMU or inertial measurement unit for PicoDev. We've got the prototype designs in, we're just waiting for the PCB to arrive, got parts, even have a working code library already. So this should be a nice fast one. In any case, I've got to get back to testing these sensors because I hope to have them up on Core Electronics very soon. If you have any questions about anything you've seen today or if you have any suggestions, open a thread on the Core Electronics forums. We'd love to see you there. And until next time, thanks for watching.